Well, good afternoon and welcome to Litson RV Live, where today we're broadcasting live here in our marketing studio, only one mile north of the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome all of you to Litson RV Live today, where in a previous Litson RV Live experience, we covered the Battle of the B-Van, so all of the camper van lineup from Winnebago Industries. Today, we are going to do a Battle of Lithium Power. So today in our marketing studio, off to your left, we have the Winnebago Bolt, and off to your right, we have the Winnebago Touring Coach Travado. We're going to compare and contrast the uh, lithium systems in each, as well as just some of the overall differences in the coach. So as with every Litson RV Live experience, you have the opportunity to communicate with us via the chat box. So if you're watching uh, on YouTube Live today, off to the right, you'll see a chat box on our website on Litson.com. Also off to the right, there's a chat box. On Facebook Live, you can actually just drop in a comment, which is also true for our Twitter followers on Periscope. Uh, we'll cover all of your questions live as we walk through the lithium differences as well as the uh, actual differences in the coaches. And we also want to welcome our marketing team today, uh, Rhonda Gertis behind the camera, Hope Litson and Maggie Breister. And Hope and Maggie are truly the ones responsible for executing a lot of these webcasts. Rhonda does just a phenomenal job with all of our media and all of the high quality content that you see on our website on Litson.com. With every Litson RV Live experience, I also want to welcome Heidi Thompson, who is our Vice President and General Manager, who will be moderating our chat today. Also keep in mind this same type of a live, high-definition, interactive presentation can be accomplished with you in the comfort of your own home or office with any of our factory-trained RV sales consultants here at Litson RV. We can conference in a partner or a spouse on any of our in-stock RVs to cover those things that are responsible, excuse me, those things that are important and relevant to you. So do we have any burning questions before we kick off or are we off and running? You're off and running. Okay, so behind me we have the Winnebago Bolt and off to your right you'll see the Winnebago Touring Coach Travato. Each of these have the Volta Power Systems lithium energy modules within their coaches. So what that means is we're trying to remove the common RV generator to provide complete 30 amp electrical service. Obviously both of these coaches can be plugged in, but what we're trying to accomplish with lithium is to remove that experience of having to use a common RV generator. So each of these coaches have the Volta Power Systems 48 volt energy pack. And depending upon which model, which we'll cover here in a moment, they're going to have anywhere between 8,700 watt hours and 11,600 watt hours of available energy. Both of these, which is very important to point out, provide complete whole coach 30 amp electrical service. And that's important to compare and contrast with other camper vans that may provide 25 amps of electrical service or 17 amps of electrical service. And basically what that means is you're going to basically be forced to run less things. Both of these right now um, are not plugged in and we have complete 30 amp electrical service. So the microwave, you can see the microwave light on. We could run the air conditioner if we wanted to. You could have a complete 30 amp electrical coach experience with each of these. It's also relevant to point out that each of these use a single state of charge gauge to activate the system. So it's one push button operation. Each of these also use a single 3600 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is by contrast to other RV manufacturers, competitors of the Winnebago product that may use a series of 2000 watt inverters or perhaps a 2000 watt inverter to run certain appliances and maybe a 1000 watt inverter to run certain other appliances. So not only are we providing complete 30 amp service with the Volta power system, we're also providing seamless one-touch operation to have complete electrical service. Also, the lithium that we use within the Volta Power Systems modules is NMC grade. It's automotive style lithium. By contrast to other RV manufacturers that may use drop-in style lithium ion technology, this is the same type of technology that you would see in hybrid and electrical vehicle applications or in such light duty passenger cars and trucks that you might see 
such as the Toyota Prius, the Chevy Bolt, the Chevy Volt, and those types of EV applications. So this is automotive NMC grade technology. So it's nickel, manganese, cobalt technology, which is automotive grade technology. Um, they have an extremely high life and they come with an eight year warranty. Now that's by contrast to other RV manufacturers that may be using um, lithium ion phosphate batteries that are drop in style and may only have a one or a two year warranty. So not only is it automotive style grade applications, but it's also a seamless one touch operation. And I really sounded like the mad scientist there, didn't I? <laughs> I was going to ask you where in the periodic table those NMCs fell, but... I used to know that. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions yeah. that are, this is a good spot. So Carol says, when I see lithium batteries that are switching out, you know, from an AGM or whatever, uh -huh. you know, what, what's the difference here? It's a system yep. versus just swapping batteries. Yeah, so that's a really good question. And so drop-in style batteries are going to have a fraction of the watt hour life, meaning you'll be forced to recharge those batteries much more often. So for example, one of the most common questions that we get here at Litson RV is, how long can I run my air conditioning? So on a Winnebago Travato, which will have 8,700 watt hours, a really good rule of thumb is about six to eight hours worth of air conditioning runtime. Whereas with the Winnebago Bolt, with 11,600 watt hours of available energy, a really good rule of thumb is about eight to 10 hours. So with the drop-in style lithium ion batteries, they're absolutely going to extend your off the grid use compared to AGM or wet cell batteries, uh, but they're gonna have to be recharged more often. And a pretty good rule of thumb on those is to achieve roughly around 1600 watt hours per battery. And that even assumes that you have a very high quality lithium battery, such as a uh, Xantrax uh, lithionics battery like we use in the VIEW and Navion, for example. But that's a really great question, and it really just depends upon how much um, you want to be able to use that before having to recharge. Another really good question from Paul. So when you're talking about you know, lacking a generator, is anything excluded from the 12 volt power source? You know, can you run your air? You can run, there isn't an appliance in there that can't be run off of it. And, and not only is there not an appliance that cannot run off of it, so you can run everything, you can run them all simultaneously. So um, with typical um, off the shelf style systems, if you're running an inverter, you're gonna be maxed out on what you can run on certain things. And that's also true on some of the competitor camper vans where you may only have 17 amp or 25 amps worth of available electrical service running off of their lithium style setup. But that's a really great question. Clarence from our website, do we know the weight difference with the generator being gone? Yeah, w by removing the generator and adding um, the Volta Power Systems NMC grade um, energy pack, it's about a push. And actually it goes in the, in the same location as well. Um, so nothing's really taken up with respect to um, anything exterior. It does use up a little bit of space for the 3600 watt pure sine wave inverter inside the coach. Great question. I have some great questions coming from YouTube. Uh, Jay is wondering what is the warranty on the lithium system? Eight years. Eight years on the uh, Volta Power Systems energy pack. And the support of a great company. The support of a wonderful company. Very early on we've been running this technology now for, for multiple years with Volta Power Systems but in the RV space uh, with Winnebago Industries now for about two years. Um, just wonderful support from Volta Power Systems. Um, all of our RVIA certified technicians here at Litson RV are Volta trained. Um, we've had phenomenal support from the company. Um, we have personal support from Jack Johnson, the founder. Um, virtually um, a, a wonderful service experience because we've had so many just very wonderful cases where they've provided support to an end user at the end user's location. And, and they just do a great job of supporting that guest experience. Um, just a wonderful company to partner with. Um, Katie on YouTube, does the National Park Travato align more closely with the Bolt or the Travato KL? That is just a great question. Um, so thank you for that, Katie. So um, we're covering, this is a Winnebago Touring Coach uh, Travato Lithium model um, that has the 8,700 watt energy pack. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Winnebago Bolt has an 11,600 watt energy pack. And really what that is, is there's, there's four modules within each of the casing, so to speak. Each one is 2,700 watt hours. 
Um, so the Bolt has all four, which brings you up to 11,600. Uh, the base lithium here with the touring coach with the Travado uh, occupies three of those, so that's 8,700 watt hours. What Katie's referencing is the limited additional National Park Foundation Travado, um, which uh, debuted, uh, what now, a year or so ago? Mm -hmm. And that is now a limited and completed uh, final run. Uh, that does have the fourth module, so it brings you up to the 11,600 watt hours in the National Park Foundation edition, and we do have a limited number of those remaining. If you want to stay on the ProMaster chassis side, which we'll get to here in a moment, um, take advantage of Auto Start, which we'll get to here in a second, um, or if you want to go to the Mercedes side, then we have the, the Winnebago Bolt. Perfect. I'm caught up for now. We're I have a few somewhat, that I'll keep for a little later. Yeah, so another good um, common question that often comes up is how do I recharge um, the Volta power system? So um, there's three different ways. Uh, as you travel down the road, we have included an additional 58 volt under the hood alternator, which is lifted up out of the way of debris. Uh, that is a 58 volt under the hood alternator that recharges the batteries. Uh, a pretty good rule of thumb, depending upon your depletion, um, is around an hour or two of driving, you'll have fully charged Volta Power Systems energy management. Uh, that's gonna be true also in the Winnebago Bolt with respect to the 58 volt under the hood alternator. Uh, they also will recharge off of the solar package that is included rooftop, in addition to the quick ports that you can use for portable solar. And then the final way that you can recharge the Volta system is by simply being plugged in. And um, in terms of the fastest way to recharge them is through driving with that 58 volt under the hood alternator. Second would be being plugged in and then lastly using the solar, which does have then the upgraded MPPT solar controller which allows for more energy absorption through the solar panels. Not to get too geeky. We good on questions? I'm good. Okay, so let's cover the two primary differences. We have two different um, lithium models. We have a Travado and a Bolt. Uh, the Travado is available with 8,700 watt hours or 11,600 if it's a National Park Foundation model, as Katie pointed out. Uh, with the Winnebago Bolt, again, that is also an 11,600 watt hour package. Um, with respect to lithium itself, that really is the primary difference. But the last thing that we're going to talk about with respect to lithium in terms of differences is the fact that the Winnebago Travado, since it is on a Ram ProMaster chassis that is gasoline powered, we are able to install a feature called Auto Start. And what that means is that when we engage the system, if the batteries get down to a certain percentage, the Ram ProMaster will actually start itself, recharge those batteries, and then turn itself off. And it can do that around certain parameters in terms of having the emergency brake set, proper temperatures, um, vehicle locked, and depending upon how you arm it. With the Winnebago Bolt, uh, we cannot use auto start, which then thus we have the higher energy pack uh, because that is a Mercedes-Benz turbo diesel. Uh, it's very challenging to allow that to idle for a long time without clogging up a particulate filter. So Mercedes-Benz doesn't allow us to install auto start within uh, the Mercedes-Benz VS30 chassis. So the Travado, both the Lithium and the National Park Foundations will both have auto start, whereas the Bolt does not. But again, it does have the larger um, Volta Power Systems energy pack. And when we've, you know, when we've been at Winnebago discussing this when it first came out, we kept asking, where's auto start and how are we going to function with this? And the answer was always, you're just never going to need it. And, and real world experience has proven Winnebago to be correct. We have a lot of bolts on the road and we have not seen a situation where a guest has not been able to at least travel the next day to recharge the batteries or use the solar to keep up. Now, granted, solar does not provide a significant amount of recharging to that Volta power system. Um, however, this being a camper van product, it's obviously nomadic and, and is intended to be going from point to point. So every time you start that engine, it's recharging um, the system. Uh, unless you're in extreme hot climates and constantly running that air conditioner and not traveling from point to point, we have not had a situation where 11,600 watt hours in this bolt is not gonna be adequate. So really it comes down to um, you know, what type of setup do I want? Um, if I am going to go out to the middle of nowhere and use auto start, yeah, I may need to go to a ProMaster if I'm not going to be driving point to point. Um, but really it comes down to size and budget to determine whether or not I want a Ram ProMaster based Travado 
or a Mercedes-Benz Winnebago Bolt. I have a couple of good questions for you. Bob is wondering, can you use all of the watt hours? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. The reserve capacity in the Volta system is extremely fractional, very, very minor, but does have an intelligent battery management system that will manage all of that for you. Mark, on YouTube, the auto start feature is so much faster than solar, so is there a way the solar panel option can be deleted from the KL? Uh, of course it can be deleted. Um, we can delete the solar package um, option from it uh, to free up more real estate space. Um, it would be best to very simply remove it because, uh, quite honestly, Winnebago would charge you to remove it during production. So, and there's really not a big credit there. So, we had a question emailed in earlier from Paul, and he just had a question on the bolt. Uh, what what is what four by four availability is there? Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, with people have really been asking a lot. You know, can I get a Travato? And, and a lot of the reason for that is because the Travato has been out so long. Uh, it's been out since 2014. Can I get a, a Travato in four-wheel drive? It's not available in four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive from Ram ProMaster. However, the Winnebago Bolt, uh, both the 70BL and the 70KL, are both available in four-wheel drive, and they're available now. Um, so that is, that is an option um, with respect to the Winnebago Bolt. Uh, it's roughly about a $9,000 dealer cost option, I believe. Um, and then a loaded question for you from Wallace. Are you aware of any changes coming over the next many months? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, changes coming to the Travato and the Bolt. Um, with respect to the Travato, we are going to see the National Park Foundation um, be um, basically disappearing because it was a limited edition run and uh, Winnebago has confirmed they are not going to continue that into production. Um, really not a lot of changes at all with respect to the Travato other than bringing in the next chassis year, the next model year for future resale value. Um, no changes to colors, no changes uh, to interiors. Uh, most of those changes in the Travato were brought in during the middle part of the 2020 model year. And we have a really good video that just summarizes all of those differences in the middle part of 2020. So I wouldn't foresee any uh, uh, changes of substance for at least a year or two. Uh, with the Bolt just debuting last year, again, same concept. Um, this is the third generation VS30 chassis, so it's going to be a long time before we see any Mercedes changes and no changes to the, to the Bolt itself, again, with it just being in its infancy with one year. Glenn on YouTube is wondering, will a version of the Pure 3 system be available on the Winnebago Solus? Uh, great question, and um, we get that question on the Solus and the View and Navion quite a bit, and we don't foresee that. Um, we don't foresee that primarily because of size and space that's available for it. Again, it, it really replaces the same concept size of the, the common RV generator. More specific to the Solus question, however, remember that is actually on a 2500 series chassis, so it's not on the extended overhang version of the Ram ProMaster. Um, even though this is still a 21 foot in length Travato with 159 inch wheelbase, the Solus is 159 inch wheelbase, but again, it doesn't have the extended overhang, so it's a more nimble uh, on the go length with the Solus. We don't have that amount of capacity to add that Volta system, in addition then to the 3600 watt pure sine wave inverter, which actually occupies most of this exam um, example in the um, bench space for the, the GL. Um, so it's a fairly large 3600 watt pure sine wave inverter, same concept on the View and Navion. Can you go through uh, lithium battery use in extreme temps? You bet. So now all of the uh, Travados and bolts that we have available for our guests will all have thermostatically controlled heating pads that thermostatically control themselves. And so um, there's nothing for the owner to do. So it keeps them nice and warm. There's actually a second way, just using the Truma Combi system uh, and the passive heat that, that is available to keep them warm. Uh, with respect to storage uh, with lithium, um, Volta Power Systems themselves have actually counseled us because we reached out to them several years ago when we went into our first winter. And really the best way to store that coach is to very simply ensure that you have your state of charge above 80% and completely turn off the system and then we actually take it one step further and we check ours every couple of weeks um, during cold weather storage. Uh, but again, both of these models now are thermostatically self-regulated with heating pads um, over the NMC grade uh, Volta power pack. 
One more for you, and then I'll let you keep going. No, you're good. Emily is wondering, in terms of she owns a Travado, what is available to her now from Volta? Or is she just, do we see people retrofitting their existing regular Travados with any type of Volta system? Uh, we have, that's a great question. And we have, when, when Volta first came and partnered with Winnebago, uh, we were told that yes, you could retrofit, and you can. Um, it hasn't been such a big demand because it is very, very expensive to do so. Um, it's expensive to bring that in. It's also expensive to retrofit. And then you kind of weigh the, the cost of, you know, do I just trade in and, and get a, a new lithium model? It's absolutely possible. Um, even with the volume that we do and, and the expertise that we have with our RVI certified technicians, we have not done one here at Litson RV. I'm just going to be honest with you. It would be better to take it directly to Volta, which is based out of Holland, Michigan. But it certainly is possible. I'll just keep going. Rick is asking from awesome. our website, um, if the Volta system is turned off, will the solar still charge the batteries? Uh, and, yeah. and will the DC outlets remain powered? Um, yes and no. So um, you're still always going to get solar input into that. Again, it's not that substantive, though, to where it's going to keep that topped off if you just left it on. And in order to have 12 volt to the coach, or 110 volts to the coach, you do have to have the system engaged, and it is just that one single state of charge gauge that engages the Volta system, which then provides 12 volt to the coach, and the inverter is a separate button. And the reason why we have that is if you are just dry camping, um, boondocking, RVing off the grid in the middle of nowhere, and you have no need for 110 volt electricity, you can boondock, RV off grid, for a long, long, long time because of just how many watt hours are available for 12 volt load. So you would have to have the system engaged for 12 volt, um, but again, that solar is always constantly coming in. So can you re review again what solar is on each and what they're expandable to? Uh, yes, so depending upon the model, 200 to 230 watts of standard solar. And again, depending upon the controller, a pretty good rule of thumb is 475 to 515 for expansion. Now remember, we don't have a lot of real estate up top. So it's challenging to even max out that um, MPPT solar controller. Uh, typically, the only time we even come remotely close is when we're using the portable quick ports to be running uh, portable solar for it. Uh, Steve on YouTube is asking, will an induction cooktop be available on the Travato GL? Uh, not to our knowledge. Um, do we foresee an induction cooktop going in? Um, we can always replace it. Anything's possible. Is it expensive? Yes. Um, we, we can certainly do that. Just recall that the reason why these coaches are not all electric is because we do need the LP system for the Truma Combi uh, Eco Comfort Plus system that provides the combination of passive heat and then also hot water. So we do still need LP for that, and for that reason, it makes sense just to bring that into the galley area. So can't go all electric because of the Truma Combi Eco Comfort Plus system. Um, but that's the main reason why. Fred from our website is asking, can you add the fourth power pack to the GL? Uh, not at this time. Not at this time. In fact, I asked that question last fall. And you'll ask it again. And I'll ask again the next time <laughs> I see Jack Johnson. And if Jack's watching right now, you can just chat in. We've had great partners jump in on chat, Jack. It's not a, not a loaded deal. <laughs> I'm caught up on questions. So um, just wonderful questions today. Uh, real briefly, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because we have such great media on our website from uh, Rhonda Gertis and Maggie Breister and our marketing team. Um, but let's also just cover some of the primary differences between the Travato and the Bolt. Um, the Promaster 3.6 liter gasoline powered front wheel drive V6. Again, this is gasoline powered. Uh, pretty good rule of thumb is 18 to 22 miles per gallon highway. Um, does run on gasoline, uh, 21 feet in length about four inches shorter in terms of height than the Winnebago Bolt. In terms of the interiors, the fit and the finish is very, very similar. Both use the high-end Technoform Italian-based cabinetry. Uh, the reason why we make that investment is because it's very light, so it frees up that occupant and cargo car carrying capacity, uh, but it's also moisture resistant. Whereas the uh, Winnebago Bolt is Mercedes-Benz VS30 powered, so it's rear wheel drive with a turbo diesel platform, uh, 325 pounds feet of torque, 188 horses, um, does have dual rear wheels, whereas the 9,350 pound gross vehicle weight rating on the Travado does not require it. 
Uh, this is an 11,030 pound gross vehicle weight rating chassis, uh, and it's about four inches taller than the Travato. And I know I've left out a lot, but I just kind of wanted to give an overview of the two because if, if we're discussing the Volta systems being so similar, then the question becomes, why do we have both? Why do you think we have both? I think we have both because they appeal to different guests that um, may want a different driving experience uh, compared to um, a ProMaster gasoline powered. Some people are a little bit nervous about going diesel. Some people will only go diesel. So um, really it appeals to just a lot of different people and it has a lot of different versat versatile features um, to enable you to customize your RV experience based on what you want. Katie, on our YouTube channel, do both the Bolt and the Travato have the upgraded insulation? Oh, great question. Uh, yes, they both do. Uh, recall that was one of the differences that we talked about mid-year for the 2020 model year uh, in the Travato. And with this being new, it does have the same level of automotive EPS style uh, insulation uh, inside the coach. So a great four season camper van. Rick from our website asks, if using a portable solar, do you still use a BMS with the portable? Uh, it actually, oh, I'm sorry. Let me repeat that, or let me go back, because I want to make sure I did, I, when you said BMS, I just wanted to cover that. What you may be referring to is the solar controller that's on the back side of a portable solar panel, uh, so. which includes the BMS, not necessarily for the batteries, but the solar controller itself, and you would not. And that's a really good point, because if you want a portable solar being added to either of these camper vans, you would not want to buy the off the shelf portable solar that has the solar controller on the back side of it because the two solar controllers fight themselves. Obviously there is an MPPT solar controller built into the Bolt and the Travato, so you wouldn't want to be adding another solar controller on the back side of the solar panel. Um, if that was not the question, um, go ahead and jump back in and I can cover it further if that's not what you were asking. JW on our website is wondering if you need a surge protector with the Volta system. Yeah, great question. And we've had, this question has been asked a lot. Obviously you have a very expensive investment um, with the Volta power systems. And this is coming directly from Volta. Um, they do not recommend using a um, surge protector. What they said, if you really are interested in doing that, the best way to do that is to take a portable surge guard, plug it into the campground, ensure that you've got good clean power, and then plug in directly from the coach directly into the pedestal. And that comes directly from Volta. <clears throat> Can you share some pricing differences between the two? Yeah, really good question. Pricing differences, um, really when, when you look at an 8,700 watt hour base Travato with uh, comparison to this Bolt, a pretty good rule of thumb is dealer cost difference is about $40,000. And a lot of that is in the chassis and the fourth module. Then by contrast, if you compare that to a National Park Foundation Travato, um, really a good spread there at a dealer cost level is about $30,000 between a Bolt and a National Park Foundation Travato. Marshall has a great question. What is the average diesel efficiency for the Bolt? Uh, fuel efficiency? Yep. Uh, again, uh, 18 to 22, I had one guest tell me that on their way back to Michigan, um, they, they achieved right in that range. Um, pretty good rule of thumb there is 57 to 62 miles per hour. It's absolutely RPM predicative, uh, depending upon how, how much you accelerate and where your RPM levels are at. Good question from Mark on YouTube. Most often we hear how long can we run the AC before the auto start feature recharges the batteries. Can you tell me how long can the coach be heated when you select electric power only option before the auto start feature recharges the batteries? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually it's very similar. It's gonna depend upon whether or not you're on EL1 or EL2. Um, but we did have a guest that took delivery in the cold of winter here at our facility, wanted to put their lithium to the test, ran it on EL2, um, got through close to eight hours on an 8,700 watt hour Travato, and then the auto start kicked in. Um, so remember, each of those settings within the Truma Comfort, excuse me, Truma Combi system, um, depending upon if you're running EL1 or EL2, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to range between 900 to 1800 watts of energy that you're using to run those on EL1 or EL2, which again then is a really good reason why we have the propane system uh, to be able to use that for the mix or as the primary fuel source. 
Fred on our website is asking, how comfortable is the driver's seat for somebody pushing 6'2 and 210 for the GL? Uh, the GL on the Travato, I'm assuming. So um, mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely comfortable. Um, obviously, they need to make that cargo van um, fit for a wide variety of bodies, whether they're shorter or taller or wider, um, because obviously we use a lot of different cargo van drivers for FedEx, UPS, and um, Amazon. So um, absolutely comfortable. You'll certainly get um, more leg room in a Mercedes-Benz VS30 um, by moving that seat to the rear. There's more leg room in that. Um, we do have some good pictures of different bodies in those if you're interested in that. But um, we can also just do some measurements on a live interactive presentation for you and give you exactly what those dimensions are if you can't make it to our dealership here in Four City. Can you add National Park wheels to a regular Travato? Uh, you can add any wheels to any uh, coach that you'd like. Uh, it doesn't have to be National Park Foundation wheels. Um, they've obviously rang with a good look uh, because it's really one of the first times we brought in um, you know, some, some rugged um, outdoor wheel style appearances to a camper van, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be those wheels. Uh, you know, these are 16 inch wheels, uh, but we've done that on a few. We've actually even done it um, now on a Winnebago Solus. And so you could add those moto wheels and the BF Goodrich TA KO2 tires um, to any Travato. When boot knocking, how much longer will the Bolt be able to run the AC than the Travato? Well, theor theoretically, it's 33% um, because that's how much longer you have. And if you go back to some of our field tests that were, were guests were saying six to eight hours, eight to 10 hours, it's a pretty good, pretty good rule of thumb. Perfect, and Charlie just asked that too. How long will the AC run in the Travato before auto start? Yep, good rule of thumb, six to eight hours in the Travato with 8,700 watt hours. If you have a National Park Foundation with that fourth cell or the Winnebago Bolt um, with the fourth module, uh, good rule of thumb is eight to 10 hours. And pretty similar also going back to the guest that had asked earlier about the Truma Combi system. A little bit longer actually on the Truma Combi system than the air, but it's pretty close. Barb is asking, now that Winnebago is putting a second alternator in the Mercedes-Benz chassis on the Rebel, will they add a second alternator on the Bolt like the Travato? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Now that Winnebago is putting a second alternator in the Mercedes-Benz chassis on the Rebel, yes. will they add a second alternator on the Bolt like the Travato? Okay, so the Bolt already has that. In fact, it has a much higher output 58 volt under the hood alternator on the Bolt to recharge the Volta power system. Now, the second alternator that is going to be added on the Rebel uh, later this summer is actually a 12 volt alternator because it does use 125 amp hour drop in style batteries, not a Volta power system in the future Rebel. I'm caught up. Awesome. Well, great questions today. Um, as we covered the battle of lithium and covering the differences in lithium between well, the camper vans. I have uh, three more questions. They're just, I thought you had more to say. <laughs> no, I was wrapping. Okay. Well, I'll cover wrap anything yet. though, and I'll stay as long as you all like. Hold the wrap. Okay. Keith on our website is wondering, is Winnebago up uh, running? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, um, the camper van segment and uh, the classy fuel efficient segment, um, really is at full capacity, if not higher than full capacity um, in, in all of our facilities. So, uh, Mark on YouTube is wondering if you can give us an update on the ProMaster recall status. Uh, I can. So the transmission uh, recall, um, recall, recall on the ProMaster chassis, um, actually most of ours by example are actually going to be completed this week locally. Uh, Winnebago is now starting to ship that product. Uh, cables are available and primarily, I would guess, being allocated based on um, how much volume and necessity there is. So obviously Winnebago having a lot of uh, clout or buying power with Ram Promaster uh, received those first. Um, most of ours are completed. They'll be completed this week and they'll be ready to ship. Bob on YouTube is asking, will the Travato be adding a three-point seat belt in the rear seat in the future? Uh, not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. And Bulldozer is asking, is Winnebago going to build something like the Bolt or Era on the Ford Transit diesel or gas chassis? We hope they do. We hope they do, but don't have any knowledge of it right now. Katie 
has another question. Do both the Travato and the Bolt have the new Mach 10 AC? Yes, uh, they do as, um, as the uh, mid-year running line changes were made on the 2020s. Um, so late model 2020s will on the Travato and the NDQ or the non-ducted quiet um, has always been on the Winnebago Bolt. Perfect. And then the last question, this was emailed in to us early from a guest of ours and posted to YouTube, okay. wondering if you can settle a disagreement. And I now, blew that you, you said you had I, a loaded question earlier. I was going to say that your kids called and they have a disagreement for you to... Well, it but, is middle of the afternoon, so we yeah. do have to t tune in to Judge Judy. So. Okay, we're going to take a hard right turn here. And on views and Navions with HWH leveling jacks, Got it. what is our position or recommendation on leveling your coach with your wheels off the ground, particularly your front? Uh, yeah, I mean, we only recommend bringing an axle off the ground with any type of a leveling system in the event that it is an emergency. So if you're on the side of the road and you need to change out a, a wheel, so to speak, um, we certainly don't recommend it. That system is not designed to keep the coach completely on stilt, so to speak, um, whether it's even one axle or the rear for extended amounts of time. And you have to be a little bit careful of, about it because depending upon what, which axle it is uh, that's off the ground, you gotta remember that emergency brake actually engages that axle. So. Um, you got to be careful about that so that it doesn't roll away on you. Um, so th that's why um, we do certainly offer Lynx levelers. They're not any money. We're not trying to sell anything. But you can support that weight under the wheel if you're in an excess slope situation. But you certainly don't want to have your house on stilts for an extended amount of time. Being careful. Well, of course. Of course. And now I am going to stop so that you can wrap. So great questions today. As I do wrap, if you have any other questions, be sure to drop those into the chat box and we'll cover them at the end. I just want to thank all of you for joining us today uh, as we broadcast live here in the Litson RV Live experience in our marketing studio at our dealership only one mile north of the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to thank Rhonda, Hope, and Maggie uh, for all of their marketing assistance. Heidi, thank you for covering chat as you always do. And again, keep in mind, we can do the same type of a live high definition interactive presentation, which we do on a daily basis here at Litson RV in the comfort of your own home or office with any of our factory trained RV sales consultants. We can cover all those things that are specific and important to you on any of our in stock RVs. Anything come in? Nope, we're clear. So again, thank you all for joining us.